Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm continuing with the rising sign readings and we're up to the rising sign of Leo. If you haven't seen my um, videos for the last couple of months this year, um, I have decided to change it up a bit and I'm now putting um, the astrological highlights of the month into a, a separate video not here on this um, table, not with cards, but with um, the charts and explaining the different energies and how to work through those energies for the month that will actually be an addition to um, help you working with your reading for the month ahead. Um, we're into April, if I didn't already mention that already but yeah we're already up to the month of April but yes yeah, so the um, video that I'm going to do is um, talking about the highlights like the main moon phases if there's any retrogrades um, any eclipses which happen to be both going on this month um, <coughs> retrogrades and eclipse energies so yeah I'll be talking about that in my video. It's not going to be a long hour long video or anything like that, but it's just talking about the main um, things that are going on, like the new moon eclipse and um, the effects from last month's um, lunar eclipse and also Mercury retrograde. So those those um, bit, those highlights, I'll be talking about those and how to work with those energies. Um, and showing the charts, of course, in that. And that will be found on my community tab. Um, so you can jump into that and, and find that. At the, it should be the top um, post on my community tab, so it won't be hard to find. Um, yeah, so um, apart from that, if you don't already know, I work with the True Sidereal Astrological System. And um, so... If you're working with tropical, um, you may want to look at the Cancerian one or better still jump into the um, description box where I've got a couple of um, links you can go to. I'm not affiliated with either where one of them is for the tropical chart to, to be generated for free and another one is for the true sidereal chart to be generated for free. And as I said, those links, um, I'm not affiliated with either of them. Um, yeah, and also I would um, recommend um, checking out the pinned comment of this video as well because it will give a bit of um, information about a tropical um, astrologer's viewpoint of true sidereal and um, how they compare the two and, and their views on it and how you can use work with both of them and so forth that I think would be helpful as well so that's also in my pinned comment you might want to um, check that up I recommend you check that too so I think we're done there um, with all the bits and pieces so let's jump into the month ahead um, astrology um, for you what the cards want to tell you what spirit wants you to know so let's jump in and see what we've got waxing crescent moon okay so that's heading towards a full moon but it is new moon energy still because it's waxing so this is a three-day period directly after the new moon which happens to be an eclipse this month and when is it i think it might be eighth or ninth so we're talking say say it's the eighth then we're looking a three-day window from there so 8th or 9th 11th or to the 11th or 12th so it's directly after the new moon Taurus okay Taurus is further along in the chart um, the 10th house yeah Taurus is in your 10th so Maybe your working life has something to do with, um, well, bringing in money, but also self-worth. Seventh house. Well, that's your ascendant, which is actually, uh, sorry, descendant. Your ascendant is um, not new moon, Leo rising, um, but your descendant is Aquarius in the seventh, which is the Libra house. Aquarius is in the Libra house. Okay, so now we've got the Aquarius house, the 11th house, and that's in Gemini for you. 
last quarter moon. Okay. Well, that's further along in the month. Hmm. Because that, that's the first card that came out, which is after the new moon. And see, this is before the new moon. So if we're ta to take this at face value after the new moon, then this is right near the end of the month because this is a week after the full moon. Let's see what else is going on. Because the last quarter moon is full moon energy. This one's new moon energy at the moment. So now we've got 10th house, which is Capricorn themes. So we've got Taurus and 10th house mentioned twice now. So a career thing. Ninth house, Aries. Well, that's about um, higher learning, travel, um, like long distance travel, unlike Gemini, which is like pretty much down the road in the neighborhood kind of travel um, with your car, for instance. This is like your aeroplane travel and all that sort of thing or, or uh, sea, overseas, that sort of, you know, expansive, long range stuff worldwide it could also be travel um via the internet like you know because we these days we can meet a whole bunch of people or at least speak to a whole bunch of people even in comments on videos and that can speak to a whole bunch of people from all different areas of the world which is <laughs> pretty crazy but it's really i think it's fantastic uh waning gibbous okay so that's after the full moon has happened and that's a three-day window this is last quarter so now we're going to maneuver this around here and put this guy here so you've got a bit of the moon situation going on this is the full moon this one's not the eclipse because it's this month but we will be still feeling the effects of last month's um, penumbral lunar eclipse and that one's definitely the solar eclipse. Um, Virgo, which is your second house, Taurus house. This is in your 10th. This is the Taurus house in Virgo. So a lot of, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and detail, detail when it comes to your money. Seventh, eleventh, and tenth, and ninth. Seven, nine, ten, eleven. Groups, career, expansiveness, relationships, which doesn't necessarily mean romantic. It can be partnerships, it can be friendships, it can be family. Um, what else have we? Psyche. Ooh. This is near the middle too. Other people's opinions of us, what we do and don't do, what we do and don't like, um, is none of our business, so to speak. That's really, when Psyche comes out, that's pretty much what you've got to, um, the, yeah, you don't have to, got to, have to, anything. But the mantra technically pretty much should be, that what other people's other people's opinions of me is none of my business don't don't be um allowing that to be your story don't let allow other people's negativity negative opinions of something about you or about a belief you do or something you do or your work 10th house don't let other people's opinions be your story because this is also um, you know like at face value your psyche your emotional social um, mental I mean 
the psyche in general, whether you whether you're completely healthy or whether you may have some um, difficulty in that area. I don't want to say too much because the stupid algorithms will then jump around and I, um, at this point, I um, haven't got the money to um, to spend on, um, what is it, the, the YouTube thing to stop the ads, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so once I do, then I will stop the ads because, yeah, I even get ads when I'm looking in my own video. So that's ridiculous, but yeah, and it's annoying because I have a lot of Virgo in my chart. Anyway, enough about me. Let's keep going. Aquarius. Well, we had Aquarius the house and Aquarius was in your seventh as well. The Aquarius sign was in your Libra house and the Aquarius house had, uh, what was that, Taurus? No, it was... Um, the yeah, Aquarius house had Gemini, that's right, yeah. This energy is freedom, loving, rebellious, idealistic and technological. And see, here we go again with this group thing being um, in the middle. So this is significant because this is like the crux of your reading kind of thing. What's this next card? The moon which we've got moon phases that we're going to need to concentrate on. Well, you guys will. I'm not um, Leo rising. Um, your unconscious, sensitive inner emotions and responses. Well, you know, this kind of makes sense to me because finding that balance, even if people are giving you um, grief, so emotional grief or whatever, or, or treating treating you unfairly, um, uh, being critical. You know, words can sting. And sometimes people don't know the actual power that, that words have and also how the words are said. You know, the, the facial expression, the, the tone of the voice, the context of what's being said, you know. In any case, all of that, don't let it sway your emotions, you know. Don't, don't let it be a ball and chain. Don't let it be your story. And this is right in the middle. So, you see, they're all with their arms up joyfully. You know, like they're at some concert or something going, yay, and there you are on the top of the world kind of thing. Don't worry about what other people say and think and, you know, whether they approve or not. Have your emotions balanced and, and um, go ahead with what you want to do with your career and groups or whatever. Sag, here we go. with uh, We got ninth house. Here. Yeah, we had ninth house, but that's, that's a Sag house. Um in Aries, but now we've got Sag. Uh, where are you, Sag? Your Capricorn's in the sixth, so Sag would be in the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Sagittarius is in the Leo house for you. Ah, yes. Okay, so I always remember once I've started this, because um, you've got Aquarius house right that has Gemini, so that's double air. Um, and then you've got double air again with Aquarius sign being in the Libra house. Um, Virgo's in the Taurus house, double earth. Taurus is in the Capricorn house, double earth again. This is Aries, so that's double fire. This is double earth again, right? Because 10th house is in Taurus again. So you, you, yeah, your houses sort of have the same element as the sign. I only remember that when I'm sort of partway through and I think, oh, hang on a minute. So, yeah, anyway, Sag <coughs> in the fifth, in the Leo house. Leo house is all about fun. Sag is easygoing and expansive. Um, this energy imbues power, superior confidence and enthusiasm with faith, good fortune and authority. And here we go again. Look, he's got his arm up like victorious see how i said you're on top of the world don't worry about 
what people's ridiculous comments you know that's the thing as well that I often say when psyche comes out apart from the idea of other people's opinions and none of our business are the people anyone's opinions are solely based on what well, we all have an opinion right they're solely based on our own life experience only we do not see it through the eyes of someone else we make our opinions we put our opinions forward whether they're nice nasty whatever but they're solely based on what our life perception of our life is or how we perceive whether something's good or bad, um, if that makes sense, which essentially, again, means other people's opinions are none of your business because they're based on their own life experience and not yours. So don't take it on. Don't be like she's looking down and looking a bit sad, you know, and the moon's... See, so that's a new moon and that's a full moon in the water. So we've got the eclipses, right? Maybe there's a, a need to balance your emotions somehow. Or allow yourself to feel through your emotions, maybe. Don't hold back for other people, you know? Maybe you have to sort of, um, you don't have to do anything, but maybe it's something about allowing yourself to feel those emotions, not holding that back, but maybe doing it in a, a, a private, personal setting where you're not feeling incredibly vulnerable where it's not someone else judging you or whatever somewhere something uh some sort of situation where you can be on your own and feel safe to let your guard down in that sense and work through let those emotions go through your physical body you know and then shake it then dance or shake it out um afterwards so that then you can be working with your new moon eclipse energy and look this as i've said anyway with the eclipse both the eclipses we've got the energy of both of them anyway so bringing in the new as well as clearing out the old is sort of a um, symbiotic kind of i think that's the right word i want to use the symbiotic kind of um experience at the moment because they both have a minimum three month window on either side of their um, actual event so we're in the doorway and we will be for the next couple of months of the both of the eclipses and they're both in this card yeah i virgo's right next to it and virgo's all about the health duty service Often is health duty service to others, but we cannot be properly of service to others if we're not taking time to fill our own cup, right? So I think that that's about clearing away any any um, pent up feelings or hurt feelings about what other people, you know, sometimes unhealed themselves want to make, you know, comments that are pretty horrible pretty or sting you know um and can be damaging if we take it on see she's definitely not looking happy she's in her thoughts you know and you don't want to sort of get too much in your thoughts because that's another thing clearing the mind clearing your emotional your mental your social perhaps what are you taking on? What's healthy for you? See, bringing in the new but clearing out the old. And the full moon um, later in the month is not going to be another eclipse because we had one in, in March, but then the new moon eclipse, solar eclipse, is going to be um, this month. But then the later in the month the full moon is going to be a regular full moon, but we're going to have the energies of last month's eclipse still running as well as this month's eclipse if that makes sense 
And did I say? Yeah, I did. Uh, Sag is in the Leo fifth house. Okay, Pluto. Yeah. Transformation. Phoenix rising. You can be the Phoenix rising once you work through these feelings. <coughs> Let them pass through your body, so to speak. Allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to emote in a private, safe secure setting i want to say you know i mean letting our emotions out makes us incredibly vulnerable at times and unless we're with someone who's going to be understanding who we can trust it's a very um, personal private thing and we can still do that on our own as well i mean it depends um the setting there i mean there's also the option of um therapy going to a therapist that's you know another thing that psychic could bring forward but um again that's that's if you feel you need that um it, it's obviously there for those who need it you know it's not a not a um negative thing it's not a it's not it's not a weakness to jump into therapy from time to time you know um, but be, besides that, I think it's about making a bit of time for you, for yourself to let those emotions out of your body. Because if we don't, we then have physical pains because we're holding it in, you know, whether we, we're getting physical pains in our joints or getting headaches, um, or getting, um, digestive issues, back pain, all those things can be attributed to stress that we're holding on to and not letting pass through our body, you know. So sometimes having a big old cry is not a um <laughs> is not a negative or weak thing to do. And like I said, if you're putting yourself in a place where it's uh safe, where you feel safe where it's private if you know if it's if if you're that way that you don't want to be making yourself feel too vulnerable in front of someone else if you don't have anyone that you feel you know that you can share that with um then yeah to to take take that time find somewhere where you can let it out you know where you can safely let it out and you're going to, yeah, you're going to feel a lot lighter by doing that because I think that's what Psyche's trying to tell you because it's right next to here too. And once you've dealt with that, because these are, these are bookending Aquarius, so I think that the idea is to use the full moon energy to clear that, and I'm talking the the um, eclipse one too because the eclipse is in, um, the, the full moon eclipse was in Virgo, right? The new moon eclipse is in Pisces. So there's a lot of the water energy. You didn't get 12th house and you haven't got Pisces at this point. Um, but still, that's probably a good thing because Pisces can sort of be a bit, um, I mean, Cancer, the Cancerian side, sign is a bit emotional. But I think in this manner, it's like a, a balanced emotional thing that you've got to let this out to clear it like psyche wants you to do psyche's supporting you with doing this so that this is what's going to happen see and this is the proverbial phoenix rising the stereotypical once you've cleared the mess out you can jump into the new moon what you want to bring in the new victory being on top of the world, the phoenix rising, your ability to transform, take a big leap forward and rebirth. And Pluto's the ruling planet of um, Scorpio and the eighth house, which neither of them have come through. But I think in terms of Pluto um, in general, I, th I think, um, yeah, it's showing where you can... Um, transform your life really and I think because we've got 10th house which is about your career and we've got 11th house which is about community communication with relationships 
Because, um, I mean, really, Gemini is the communication sign, right? But 7th is Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is covering your 7th uh, Libra house. And Gemini and Aquarius are specifically the main ones for communication. You can't have a community without communication. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's what's going on here. You're communicating. Um, Long-range communication with relationships, groups for your career. Where was Sag again? Fifth house, finding the fun and joy with that. Because see, remember, we got the victory from both these cards. This guy's going, yay. And straight up I saw top of the top of the world. Once you clear this out, which you can start doing before the new moon, then bring in what you want. Because you would have already started the transformation. else have we got here queen kunk's complexity well yeah <laughs> not gonna lie that's a um an aspect yeah there's complexity because this is about your your emotions you know even how our finances are if our finances are poor we're going to be like her and not real happy about it you know a lot a lot of people equate their happiness to how much money they have you know that's not <laughs> that's not the be all or end all but for someone that's you know barely able to pay their bills it is you know so it, it depends on again the psyche thing it depends on what other people's perceptions are as to how they perceive things like that you know whether someone's doing well with money and that's not an issue for them or someone's doing terrible then it is an issue different people's perceptions that's why we can't let other people's opinions pull us down so i think this is about clearing any fears any um self-sabotage maybe but we didn't get pisces or 12th house though but fears may be around what people might think because again if we look at this how I said the book ends here well we've got the book ends there as well and they're both on this you know both with this in the middle again so there's the victory being on top of the world and being celebrated you know like the six of wands actually that reminds me of the six of wands that card this one's giving me the emperor either way power cards in the tarot um these aren't tarot obviously but i'm just picking up those those tarot cards um yeah but it's definitely about balance the balance of your emotions and still being able to so being able to clear that and balance the the emotions and any worries or fears that you have perhaps of leading and being victorious perhaps it's it's definitely complex but it, you're going to be the phoenix rising after you look into this you're going to have success try and flow yeah straight after that we've got easy go easy flow because you would have transformed bam fourth house roots well now we've got the cancerian house did we already get the sign no we did ah <laughs> It's also a water sign. It's Scorpio. Now we get Scorpio. Pluto ruled Scorpio. Right. Fourth house is home and family. The Cancerian sign. Cancerian house. Covered by the sign of Scorpio for you. Okay, so... And we've got the next water sign, Pisces. I had a feeling I was picking up on the possibility of self-sabotage with the piscean things where's pisces now pisces i think is in well it's a water house oh i think it's in the eighth house which is the scorpio house scorpio's in the fourth 
Pisces is in the Scorpio house in the 8th. The mystic. See, you don't need to sabotage yourself. You're, you know, it, because the uh, occult sciences and all that sort of thing cover the 8th house as well. And here you've got the mystic. So you've got the Pisces, uh, the mix of Pisces and Scorpio, which is fantastic. Don't be afraid of what other people think. Don't don't let that pull you down. I think it's not so much about um because we haven't got any south node or anything. So I think it's not so much about uh past issues or self-sabotaging yourself, but don't allow the sabotage to happen via other people's ridiculous opinions. Because that's what they are, really. No one should be giving an opinion quite frankly, because it's, you know, solely based on their own um, perception of life in general, how they've lived their life and what they've lived through. That's why they make their opinions. I mean, especially the negative ones, you know, the ones that pull us down and make us, you know, get us in feeling away, you know. They're not helpful, obviously, so... Some people just should keep their opinions to themselves. Um, but, yeah, anyway, hopefully I'm making sense because, I mean, um, to a degree, some opinions are necessary. You know, if you've got a business feedback, that's opinions and that's necessary, positive or negative, you know, for instance. But when someone's just being outright nasty, you know, or... or if they may not realise how how much of a sting their words have, you know, they, you know, they end up walking away after whatever is said and done and we're the ones still feeling it, you know, so we've got to get ourselves away from that and not allow it to pull us down. Um, opposition, balance, balance of opposites. I think I'm going to try and squeeze one more card in here without everything going because yeah you've only got one of these so yeah let's see if we can make enough space um yeah opposition with did you get your descendant yes you did the descendant right is in the seventh house the descendant is exactly the opposite of your ascendant rising sign right so it's not and a full moon is in opposition of the sun. That's why we can see the light um, on the moon because it's in opposition to the sun, whereas a new moon we don't see squat because they're in conjunction in the same area where a full moon is in opposition. So it's on opposite sides, if that makes sense. So it's a matter of... Of finding balance now you got the Libra house so Libra the Libra sign the Libra house is all about trying to find they're always trying to find balance um, and getting that balance with with what you're wanting to do because you're going to be victorious when you do what's this Oh, look, it's upright. It's the only card that came through and it's upright. Try and sextile. Symbiosis. Did I mention that word earlier? Symbiosis earlier in the... I don't know. I thought I did. Maybe. But yeah, that's upright. That's good. If it was in reverse, it would mean things are difficult. But they don't have to be difficult. No, I, th I think that um, even though you've got the quincunx there, things till now have been difficult, but I think I think you're going to be fine. I think you're just going to sort of go, okay, person X has said this or a person X or TUV have, have, have voiced their opinion on this is how they feel about X, Y, Z. Um, I'm going to clear that out and not let it be my story. Now I'll bring in the new because I am transforming and the phoenix rising and I'm going to be victorious and be on top of the world. 
symbiosis. You've got trine twice, trine sextile, see? So this is fine. You've got opposition, finding balance, yes, because Aquarius is smack bang in the middle, which is in the Libra house, see? And like I said, it's bookended by this, so clear this with the full moon energy and the previous full moon eclipse energy and then you're jumping into the new moon eclipse energy which again you can use you don't have to wait till the end of the month to work with this energy to clear that first and then jump into the new moon eclipse energy to then bring your victory and success yeah yeah wow yeah you've got a lot of victory and success just clear any of these thing things so that they're not you're not taking on the opinions and stories of other people and you're just jumping in and Jumping ahead, jumping in. I just thought of Aries. Aries is in what, your 10th? No, no, Aries can't be in your 10th because it's a fire. Aries is in your 9th, I think. Yeah, Aries is in your 9th house. So expansiveness, oh, Sag house, Sag house, ex covered by the sign of Aries. So move forward. Expansiveness, world is your oyster. You're on top of the world. You're going to be successful. Yay, Leo, whoa, <laughs> okay, we've got a few of these numerology cards, so let's jump in and see what these say, nature, okay, so we've got the green heart chakra colour, um, well, that's about emotions and balancing emotions, relationships, um, emotional balance in general, see, yeah, love as well. Um, purple's the cure for feng shui money issues if you have any um, seven the mind and creativity for the number of the builder seven four is eleven which is the master number uh, relationship number and I've recently been feeling that the master numbers even up to 99 give me the perceptions <laughs> here we go I have a perception see um, I have a, a, a um, opinion, perception, viewpoint, whatever. Doesn't, doesn't have to be your story. But when I see um, master numbers, the, you know, double numbers, I feel that it means to me what I'm seeing is that it, 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 there's more than one person involved who can benefit from the energies is quite, you know, point blank what I see with the master numbers. And... There's more than one person in a group, isn't there? Nature, getting out in nature might be helpful as well to sort of um, refill your cup. Virgo, remember, the health side of things. Nature can be very healing. Virgo's all about healing. Two, patience. Yeah, here we've got a relationship number again. And this is orange, which is um, the sacral chakra, which is all about creativity, emotions, healing, sexuality, relationships. So, yeah, um, I want to say have patience with yourself. Have patience with the process. I mean, if I can get this up fast enough, then this isn't happening till I think the 8th or 9th or something, this new moon eclipse which means you can jump into the full moon clearing away um, any concerns or anything that's been stopping you you know and if you need to jump into your feelings to let them out it's it's no matter what gender you are having a big old cry sometimes is what we need to release those energies or dance around just with whatever favorite music you have just dance around and, and move your body around so it releases energy that way as well personal growth seven the mind and creativity feng shui cure for money again and once we feel better about ourselves we'll be able to bring in money better easier Wow, follow your dreams, exactly. And turquoise, um, the, the colour turquoise is the same as um, the actual crystal stone, which is all about healing. 
you know. And there's the heart chakra color again. We had green there. We've got the pink there. They're the two heart chakra colors. Eight, money and stability. Five, <laughs> freedom. Eight and five is four, the number of the builder. We've got that back there as well. Follow your dreams, Leo rises. Absolutely. Because that's going to be healing. That's going to help your health. See, Virgo with the health. Yeah, I thought I saw the word health here. <laughs> yeah, so there's this, I think, is a mix of red and orange. It's like a burnt orange. So I would go with the sacral chakra and the base chakra, the root chakra, um, which is about grounding um, material stability and security, that sort of thing. We already talked, spoke about the purple colour. Seven, the mind and creativity. One, personal power and emotional vitality. Eight, stability and money again. Abundance, yay, pink, heart chakra colour again. Another um, master number, and this time it's specifically on a card. Double money and stability, which comes to a seven, mind and creativity. Remember, Sag is in the creative house of Leo, fifth house. Yeah, you're going to get abundance and success. Yay, guys. Because I think you guys have been going through a pretty, you have been anyway, going through a pretty tough time recently. I remember some of the readings were bringing out things were pretty tough for you guys, but I think it's starting to move forward now. Well, happy ending. Yes. And now we've got yellow, the solar plexus, personal power, intellect, ambition, self-worth. We already covered purple again, the feng shui cure for money. Nine big beginnings, big endings. Well, last month's um, partial lunar eclipse and now this month's solar eclipse are big beginnings and big endings. You can't really get any bigger than the eclipses. Three, action, activity, youth and communication with your community. I don't want to hide that actually, so I think I'll... See if I can. Maybe. <laughs> oh well. There. <laughs> okay. Because uh, yeah, I I think that's um, relevant to for you to see the victory and success thing. Love partnership. Ooh. See. Well, that doesn't have to be romance. It can be. There we've got the um, throat chakra as well throat chakra, um, speaking your truth, see, allowing yourself to not be pulled down by other people's opinions, allowing yourself to speak up um, so that you can transform and have enjoyment from the fifth house with easygoing Sag. Love partnership can simply mean what, again, with the um, Taurus, you know how I said with um, second house money and self-worth thing, um, Taurus house covered by Virgo, what you value can be with the groups, for instance, and, you, and your work. You know, the value that you see in that um, and the love partnership being those who support that, perhaps. You know, it could be romance, but... I mean, we did get the seventh house, but I'm really thinking more it's a career-ish thing and a community group thing, like long-range community internet group sort of Aquarius things. Um, so we've got the throat chakra, which I just mentioned, and now we've got orange again, creativity, healing, sexuality, and relationships with the... Um, sacral chakra to another relationship number oh, okay well relationships again i think it's more about a group thing um six um is temporary opportunity but it's also focus detail and dignity similar to virgo again with the self-worth thing two and six is eight we've got another eight again money and stability I think you're on the way to success, Leo Rises. I really do. 
Okay, let's see what your um, abundance messages from the universe say. Like waves eternally lapping at the shore, the universe is eternally knocking at your door with abundance and riches beyond anything you can now imagine if only you knew the universe. If only you knew. Well, now you do. <clears throat> so don't hold back. It's time for you to shine. Yes. Clear away anything like that. Don't let anyone's opinions pull you down. And, uh, and you don't need that ball and chain. You've got, you, you're going to be too busy. You've got too much to look forward to. You've got success and victory right there on the way. Abundance, follow your dreams, personal growth, bam. Health within that because of, you know, and whatever is a love partnership in your perception. In your perception, because the perception that's important for you is yours, not someone else's. It's not follow someone else's dreams, it's follow your dreams. Reality is not that you are weak and dream of becoming strong, poor and dream of becoming rich, alone and dream of having friends, but that you're already Strong, rich, and among friends. Yet at times you dream that you're not. Silly, the universe. These are very similar. If only you knew, at times you'd think you're not. Yes. See, get out of your head. Exactly what I'm thinking. Get out of your head. Because look what's going to happen once you do. <laughs> Happy ending. Damn. <laughs> Everything's going to be, yes, everything's going to be fantastic. Tap into those energies that want to help you clear that crap away so that you can be victorious and succeed and transform and jump into that eclipse energy. It's an eclipse in Pisces. Where's Pisces again for you guys? Um, eighth house. Yeah, yeah, eighth house. So that's about shared resources, which maybe that's another community thing, see, which can also involve your career. Oh. I hope you get back on track, guys, because I've been really wanting you guys to um, have much better for yourselves because I've seen um, the last... I don't know, three or four readings or whatever they were. Some were really difficult. That you Well, they showed that you were seeming to go through some really difficult energies, those of you who are Leo Rises. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, most don't stop to think, but both having money and not having money make fantastic adventures possible that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Same goes for having and not having anything else. Everyone's a winner in time and space. And you are going to be a winner. Look, you've got winning cards. Bam. Victory. Success. And like I said, with the Six of Wands, you're probably going to be celebrated too. So get out there and do what it is that's in your heart that you love. Follow your dreams. Do not let other people's negative comments or whatever hold you back. Just go... Cool, you think that? Fine, I'm still going ahead because I've got all this to go, you know, looking forward to. Healthy abundance, happy endings, getting in touch with what is value, to what you value, what you love, partner. It could also be love partnership with the universe, God, whoever you believe in to bring about these new energies, clear away the old, bring in... Beautiful new energies. Yeah, there's abundance on the way, guys. Come on. Okay. So now the guardian angels. What do we see for you there? We have blessings. Boom. <laughs> Love, light, blessings. Through this card, you're being showered with angelic light. Accept the blessings about to come your way and know that you deserve to be and have all your heart desires. Follow your dreams, personal growth, happy endings, love, partnership, abundance. Bam. Um, you are being lovingly guided along a golden path, 
a magical journey through which you shall discover your true essence. See, because you're going to transform personal growth. The infinite and eternal you. Congratulations. Yes. Let me put that there. Prayer. Dear Guardian Angel, help me to believe that all is possible through love. Help me to help me manifest my dreams. Follow your dreams, yes. And live an inspiring and fulfilling life. Abundance, happy endings, love, partnership, personal. I'm broken record. I don't care if I'm annoying. You know I'm trying to make a point here. Um, help me to feel God's presence in presence. Present. Present. Ah! You're getting a present. <laughs> help me to feel God's presence in every moment. Help me feel eternally loved. Thank you for being always by my side. Yes. Oneness. Someone you dearly miss is forever present in your heart. Remember, dearest one, that even though there has been a physical parting, spiritually those we love never leave us. Creation is eternal. Nothing is ever truly missing, for all is in interconnected and ultimately one. Judgment. Ooh. Let go of your fear of being judged. What did I say? It's exactly about that. Clear that away. Your opinion is the only one that matters right now, Leo Rises. Get on your stage. Seriously. Remember, when was the last time you walked in a room and stole the show, so to speak? I bet it's been a long bloody time. Excuse my language. It's time to go back and do that. I'm sorry, but it is. It's time for you to be a little self-centered. In a, not in an arrogant way, but you know, I think you know what I mean. Um, let go of your fear of being judged. You are good enough. See? It's time to release all that you have kept safely locked away in your heart. Yes, let out those emotions. Let them go through your body, even if it's just simply dancing around and moving your body to release the stagnant energies. Um your true essence and potential have been restricted by structure and method for long enough and other people's opinions. Oh, my God. There is no right or wrong way. Just be you. Yes. Guilt. Here we go again. You do not need another's approval to feel worthy of love, regardless of what you've done or what you think you've failed to do. From your soul's perspective, there's neither right nor wrong. Every experience in life is here to help you expand your awareness of love so that you may embrace ever greater spheres of wisdom. You've done nothing wrong. And that's exactly right. You've done nothing wrong. Stop sitting in this negative energy. You've got victory and success on the way, transformation, and all these beautiful energies want to come and say, hello, Leo Rises, here we are. Take them in, in your hands and run with them. <laughs> Positive change. Dare to be different. When you are criticised, <laughs> when you are criticised, remember that you will never please everyone. You can't, we can't. It's just, you know, it's not possible. Many brilliant and gifted individuals were not fully appreciated or understood in their own lifetime. Van Gogh is, a, is one of them, you know. Um, yet it is often they who have sown the seeds of change. Oh, ho, sow the seeds of change, Leo Rises. It's, it's your time. Oh, my. Yes, it's your time. Come on, guys. You can do this. Look, look you've got all that fire. Let people see that fire. It needs to come into the world in such a beautiful blazing. See, this is Phoenix rising, right? This is fire, right? And yet it's Pluto, Scorpio um, ruling planet. But there's fire there. Sag's fire, Leo's fire, which you are a Leo riser. It's your ninth house fire again with Aries. Fire, fire, fire. There's orange fire, red. I think you know what I'm trying to say. 
fire up your life, clear away this ridiculous dogma or whatever that's gone on to make you feel a certain way, you know, you're not needing to feel that way anymore because you've got victory and um, success coming your way, abundance, happy ending, love partnership in whatever way you're wanting that is coming. Yeah, and Psyche wants to support you in clearing that away so that you can bring in the new and have a wonderful life. Try and remember, try and came through twice. So there's that, I mean, there is those, the opposition and the um, queen kunks were here because there's the issues at this point that you hadn't addressed, but now you're going to address them. The complexity and the opposition are no longer going to be difficult um, energies because you would have worked through it, transformed, and got all your goodies, your presents. Yay! Remember how I said present? Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to leave it there, Leo Rises. I, yeah, I really hope you jump into these energies because you've got so much to look forward to, so much abundance, happy endings, personal growth. Follow your dreams no matter what or who says what. Follow your dreams. Bam, get on that stage like you're supposed to. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to leave it there and wish you all the best of luck for April and beyond. And until next time, bye for now.